Hello everyone, welcome to video number 10 of chapter 5. In this video, we'll cover chapter 5.6. We'll go through the so-called the dual simplex algorithm. So let's get started. So this is an algorithm to solve a linear programming problem in canonical, in a quotation sign form. And that is, it, it looks like in a canonical form, but we relax one condition, that is, the constant vector b, we allow it to contain negative entries. Okay, so we'll cover the algorithm and introduce it through an example. This is example 5.6.1. It says, we want to minimize this objective function subject to two constraints that's um, bigger than equal sign. And the three variables, they are restricted. We see that this is a main form of an LP problem, and we need to rewrite it in the standard form and a canonical form before we can use the simplex algorithm. Okay, so we can add slack variables to make this a standard form. So since this is a bigger than equal sign for both, then we introduce x4 for the first constraint, x5 for the second one. Because it's bigger than equal sign, then we get minus x4 and minus x5, one each for each constraint. And then we have an equal sign, and then all the variables are now restricted. Okay, so now look at the set of constraints, these two equations. Um, the left-hand side is almost in a canonical form, except that this is a wrong sign because we would like to have it to be positive 1, and then the left-hand side is in canonical form. Okay, so with that in mind, um, we are going to multiply both equations by negative 1. So here I repeat it again. Now this is a positive sign, this is a positive sign, and all the coefficients, uh, they change the sign. So in particular, on the right, now I have negative 3 and negative 10. So this is um, what we refer to as the canonical form in a quotation sign. Why? Well, because it looks like it's in a canonical form on the left-hand side, but the right-hand side is negative. If we find out the basic solution, then we would have these two are basic variables. They take the value of the right-hand side, negative 3, negative 10, or the others are non-basic and they're 0. And this solution is not feasible because they are, they, the variables are restricted. Okay, so using this as a starting point, now we develop a new algorithm. We will now introduce this dual simplex algorithm through this example, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so um, let's put the information in the tableau. So, so neglect the rest and only focus on the first part of the tableau. So I have five variables, two constraints, and the objective function. I put all the numbers in. And then um, I see that um, these are negative, and then these are positive. These are coefficients for the um, objective function. Okay. So here we introduce this algorithm. We call it algorithm star. So it's basically... Um, an algorithm that you need to figure out where to pivot. Once you figure that out, and then you just carry out the pivoting process as normal. Okay, so let's look at how to find the row to pivot. So the algorithm is the following. So any row where the right-hand side is negative can be used. 
and look at this example here b1 is negative 3 b2 is negative 10 both can be used so we just randomly pick b2 let's say that's the row i'm going to pivot okay so r is the row to pivot now equals 2. once the row is decided and then i'll need to find the column which one among these should i pivot so then the algorithm says the column here we should choose only among those with negative coefficients okay so in this uh, in this uh, in this row here we will look at the column that has the negative coefficient now in our example we see that we have two candidates negative four and negative two which one should we choose so a21 a23 they're both negative okay so among these two we need to choose the column with the largest ratio of cj over arj okay so since these are positive and these are negative when you say the largest ratio you are actually finding the smallest one in the absolute value okay so let's compute so for this one i have four over negative two i get negative two and for this one i have 10 over negative four i get negative 2.5 and then i know negative two is bigger than negative 2.5 in value okay and then also two is smaller than 2.5 in absolute value okay so don't get confused there then i will pick up this one so negative two will be the point that i would choose to pivot okay so once you have selected the pivoting point then you just carry out the pivot process and then you would obtain the second tableau now what do you do now have the second tableau well you need to see if the solution now is feasible i see that i still have a negative term b1 star is now negative then the algorithm says repeat this process as needed okay so let's repeat it so we first pick the row we'll pick the first row because that's the only negative one once i have picked the first row now i am going to look at only the negative um columns which means the first and the second and then we'll compute the ratio to see which one is bigger or smaller in absolute value okay so we have two over nine negative two over nine five over two negative 2.5 so this one has smaller absolute value then you pick this one to pivot okay so after you carry out the pivoting process then you get the third part of the tableau so um now i see that the right hand side here is positive so this basic solution is now feasible and the coefficients here for the objective functions are non-negative therefore optimality criterion is met and then we can con conclude the algorithm and stop the process okay so before we move on i would like to call for some attention here so here we started with coefficients of the objective function non-negative and we see that they remain non-negative why do they remain non-negative well that is exactly because of the way we choose the pivoting point the way we choose the row and in particular the way we choose the column um, to choose the one with the largest ratio in value okay okay so let's um summarize um the dual simplex algorithm okay so step zero it's not a step it's the starting point so the algorithm starts with the following form assuming you have your problem in the form so first 
your constraints are in canonical form, but we restrict, uh, we relax the restriction on B and we allow it to have some negative. The second assumption is that all the coefficients of the um, objective function Cj is bigger than or equal to zero for non-basic variables, and they are zero for basic variables. Okay, so this is the starting point of the algorithm. Then we check if all the bi's, the constant vector, are non-negative, then you have reached the optimum and you stop. Now, otherwise, you see that for some index k, you have the b term is less than zero. And then you look at the corresponding row coefficients or the a, k, j's. They are all positive, so nothing is negative for all the j's then you conclude the constraints are not feasible, and then you stop. Otherwise, if uh, neither one nor two holds, then you know that you can apply the algorithm star we just talked about to pivot. So we would pivot following the alg uh, algorithm star we talked about on the previous page, we do it repeatedly as needed until either one is reached or two is reached, and then you stop. Okay, so um, that is all. That's the dual simplex algorithm. Now we'll take a look at what it exactly is doing. So what is a reasonable explanation of this procedure? Um, the key words here is, remember the dual problem. And remember, solving the dual problem in the end, the optimal value is the same as the original one. So we'll go through again the previous example to see how is this algorithm related to the dual. So, okay, let's um, repeat the problem again. The original problem is in mean form. It looks like this. I now put the objective function in the last um, line here. Now we want to write out its dual. Um, do we still remember what is the dual of a mean problem? Well, the dual of a mean problem is a max problem, right? So we would like to maximize this v. And uh, um, for each constraint, I introduce a variable y1 and y2. And then I transpose the coefficient matrix. Bigger than sign becomes E less than equal sign. And uh, the objective function is formed by this column here. Okay. Okay, let's try to solve the dual problem by putting it in canonical form. So you see we can add slack variables into each. So I'll have y3, y4, y5 as slack variables for each equation. Then I get equal sign. Once I did that, the constraint is in canonical form without quotation sign. And uh, um, simplex, the canonical form solves a minimization problem. Then we can just minimize negative v and multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. Okay, so that's the thing you want to minimize. And this is a canonical form starting point of a regular simplex method. Okay, so this problem can be solved in LP Assistant. We can put it in. So um, what I present here is uh, a side-by-side two tableaus of the dual problem and the original problem. So let's take a look at the dual problem. How would you solve this? Well, um, you would look at which of this is negative. So, oh, and then you find I have two of them. So I randomly pick this one, and then I look at this column. Where do I pivot? I look at the ratio, that's two, that's 2.5. I pick the small one. I'll pivot here. 
And then I get the second tap if I pivot that. And then I see I have a negative 18. So I pick this column and then look at the row, which one do I pivot? So 2 over 9 is a fraction less than 1, and 5 over 2 is bigger than 1. So that's smaller. I will pivot there, and the calculation will give me this tableau. And then I see that um, the solution will remain um, feasible, of course. The algorithm guarantees that. And then I see the coefficients for the objective function is now non-negative, and therefore I have the optimal value. Okay, so I put on the right next to it the tableau we did um, to solve the original problem with that dual simplex algorithm that we used. And then look at the, um, the connection between here. So um, we will first, first pick which row we pick the negative 10. That corresponds to you pick negative 10 here that column then we look at all these numbers we will choose only between the negative ones and in the original problem uh, in the in this in this dual problem the original simplex you will pick these two positive ones and then um, you will compare the ratio 4 over 2 negative 2 10 over negative 4 negative 2.5 and here you already have negative 10, oh, uh, sorry, you have you have positive 4 over 2, 10 over 4. And then here you will choose the smaller value, and here you choose the larger one, but actually the smaller one in absolute value. So you ended up at the same point here, okay? And the second step is totally similar. This step is just the same as this step but viewed in this transposed tableau and with the sign switched form okay and then in the end um, the optimal values is the same because one is uh, and this we are maximizing negative v so it will be the negative 24 here okay and then you see actually we'll have this number two and one is the same as the two and one here the slack is the, the solution of the dual. And then these three numbers, and we see they are here. These are these three numbers. Okay, so it just shows you that this dual simplex algorithm is actually solving the dual problem in this same tableau, but now I choose the um, pivot point in a different way. And the algorithm is exactly derived from how you would have solved the dual problem. Okay, so hope this was useful and hope you enjoyed it. And that's all for this subchapter. And I'll see you next time.